Large language model AI agents are shaking up the data analysis ecosystem because these LLMs are getting good enough where they can do a large proportion of your data analysis autonomously. However, it takes some time to set up the right tools and environment for these agents to work. And so in this video, I'll be showing you how to do that. We'll be focusing on the development environment called Cursor, which is an alternative to something like RStudio. It takes a bit of time to get used to, but once you get familiar with the interface, you will find that it really accelerates your speed of development. So let's get started. Now in this video, I'll be assuming that you are an existing R user and that you already have R installed on your computer. If you don't have R already installed, we'll link you to somewhere where you can get it. Now the first few minutes of this video are going to be just for Windows users. There's some special steps you have to do to add R to your path and also add the library for your R packages to your path. So if you're on a Mac, you can jump ahead to the next chapter. The first thing we would like to do is add R to our path. That is so that the AI agent can use R from the terminal, so it doesn't have to open the R window in order to use R. This step is only necessary on Windows, so if you're on Mac, then R is on your path automatically. So you're going to open up the settings or the system properties, and then we're going to search for environment variables. And it may look a little bit different depending on what version of Windows you're on, but just try to find where you can edit environment variables. In this case, there's the option to do it for the whole system or just for this specific user. It doesn't really matter in my case. I'll just use the specific user option for my account. And over here at the top, I can see the variables for my account. I want to add R to the path. So I'm going to click to edit this path option here. And we're going to want to add a new line here that links to the R on our computer. There are a few ways to get it. I'll show you the easiest way now. Is first you search here in your command bar for R. And if you don't find it immediately, you can go to the apps section. It doesn't matter what version of R you have. You're just gonna right click it and then open the file location. So first it's going to open the location of the shortcut. That's not what we want. We want the location of the real R. Right click on this shortcut and again, open file location. And now this is the real location of R on your computer, local disk, program file, something like that. It may not be the exact same thing, but you should definitely see bin as part of this path. And now we're going to click in this address bar at the top here, and we'll copy the address as text. So now this path is copied to our clipboard. We can go back to our list of environment variables, click on new, and then we paste in that path. So now you can see we've added in the path to R and we click okay. So now our AI agent is going to be able to use R directly from the terminal. So once that's done, we click on okay here, and now we're going to open up our command prompt. And here we should now be able to access R from the command prompt by just typing R. So you can see that R has booted up and now I can type two plus two or I can type iris and I print all of the iris data there. And now for Windows users, a second kind of variable you need to add is a path where R is going to install any of our packages. And the easiest way to get this path is to first of all, open the R GUI or you can also open R Studio but I haven't installed RStudio yet. So I'll just open the R GUI, the R program itself. And in here, we're going to type the following C-A-T or cat, then open parentheses, then capital S, small y, small s. So that's sys with a capital first S, then get env. So we're getting a variable, then open another parentheses, then open quotes. And then in here, we're going to type capital R underscore libs underscore user. Close our quote and then close our two parentheses. And this will give you the link to a directory where R can install packages. So we can go ahead and copy all of that starting from the C and ending in the R version number, copy that. And we go back to our environment variables. We click on new. We give it the variable name of R underscore libs underscore user. And then we paste in that value that we just copied, press okay. So now we have a place where R can successfully install packages on Windows. We press OK. Now there are some cases where this folder actually does not yet exist on your computer and you have to create it. So once you're done copying and pasting that path into the appropriate place, also type the following command. Again, very carefully, dir dot create. And again, this is only for Windows users, not for Mac users. dir dot create, then open parentheses, sys 
dot get env again with that capital S for the first S. Open parentheses again, and then in quotes, our libs user, close quote, then close parentheses, then recursive equals capital T. And we close our second parentheses and press enter. If it didn't exist already, then you'll just get that empty response. If it already exists, you'll get this warning message, but that's fine. And that concludes this path assignment for Windows computers. Now, the next thing we're going to do is install Pandoc. This will give our AI agent the ability to use our markdown. So for that, you go to your favorite search engine and search for Pandoc installation or install Pandoc. And usually if your search engine is any good, the first option will be the right one. So it should look something like this page, download the latest installer. And then at the moment at the bottom here is where we have the installers. And then now I'm going to download the MSI file, which stands for Microsoft Installer. Since I'm on Windows, if you're on Mac, you download the PKG file, which is the installation package for Mac. But on Windows here, I download the MSI file and I click it to open it. And I go through the installation process, just leaving all of the defaults. Now, the next thing to do is install an IDE. An IDE is a development environment that will help you use R. The one you are used to if you're an R user is RStudio. But the AI features on RStudio are really quite behind. So the one we're going to use is called Cursor. So you can search for Cursor AI in your favorite search engine. And we come here to this page. And usually it will detect your specific system and give you the right download button for it. So let's click to download for Windows. And once that's done downloading, you can click it to open and start the installation process. If you're on Mac, you do it for Mac and follow that process. Once you've finished that installation process and you open up Cursor, it will prompt you to sign up or log in. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign up now. So this is the sign in option, but at the bottom we have the button to sign up. You can use any email address you like, but if you're a student, I think Cursor has a deal at the moment for some free amount of Cursor Pro because Cursor is actually a paid product since they have to pay for the AI usage. So you could try to use your student email here. And then once you log in, it will bring you to this page that shows you your current usage. And also you can see at the moment I'm on the free trial of Pro. So it gives you two weeks of free trial of Pro, even if you're not a student. But if you are a student, after you have logged in, what you can do is search for a cursor for students free and go to this page here. And it will allow you to verify your status. Now, once you're done with that sign up process, you can log in and it will usually ask you to select a theme at the start. I don't like the dark theme, so I pick one of the light themes here, maybe light modern. And I click to continue. And we can just click to continue again and just accept all the defaults. So now let's continue our setup with Cursor. The first thing to know is that Cursor works with folders. So you have to create a folder for your analysis. Let's minimize Cursor and create an example folder on our desktop or wherever you want. Here I create a folder, I'll call it sample analysis. And then going back to Cursor, I can click to open that project. If you don't see this button here, you can get it from file and then open folder and I navigate to my desktop where I put that file, sample analysis and select folder. And then the next thing to do is install a number of extensions. These will make cursor work well with R. So to do that on this sidebar here, you have this button for extensions and we can search for the R extension. It may take a little while to find, but you should find this R extension here and then click to install it. And now that is installed, we can go ahead and make an example script. To do that, we're going to click on this button here for new file, or you could right click in here and create a new file. So let's create a new file and call it test.r. And once you create any kind of R file, if you don't have this language server package already installed, cursor will prompt you to install that. So let's go ahead and install language server. And if that doesn't come up, you can just directly install it from here by doing install.packages and then language server, and then pressing control enter to run that. Okay, let's delete that installation and show you now that this script works. So if I type two plus two and I press control enter or command enter on Mac, you will see that in this R interactive, it shows the output. And if I type plot.women, you can see the plot shows up as well. Okay, so now I wanna show you how to actually use the AI to do your data analysis. But for that, of course, we need some example data. So we'll go to the internet to get that. Open your favorite browser and type bit.ly, bit.ly slash view hyphen Ebola hyphen data. 
and that will take you to our Google Drive here where you can download this data set, this small CSV. As you can see, this is data about the Ebola Sierra Leone outbreak in 2014, and each row pertains to a patient who got Ebola, either confirmed or suspected. Once you've downloaded that, we're going to want to put it inside of our sample analysis folder. We can create a subfolder here using this button, New Folder, or if you don't see that, you can right-click and click on New Folder. Make sure you're right-clicking in this empty space here. So let's create a new folder and call it data. And we'll just drag in our data into this here. So now let's see how we can use our AI agents to do some analysis on this data set here. Let's imagine maybe I wanted to plot an age sex pyramid of these cases. I can just go to my model and ask, make an age sex pyramid of the data in the Ebola Sierra Leone dataset. And you don't have to type it exactly how I typed it. And let's see what the model does. First, it lists the items in the current directory, in the current folder. So it's going to understand what the data actually looks like. And then it reads the first 100 lines or first 200 lines of the Ebola Sierra Leone dataset. So it knows what the columns are. And then it figures out that it's going to write all of this code. And it asks me whether I want it as Python or R. So in case it wrote some Python code for you, just ask it to switch to R. So I'm going to say R script, please. Okay, and now it seems to be putting all of that code inside of my test.r file, which actually I don't want. So let me ask it to put it in a different file. So now it has made that hsex pyramid file. And as you can see, as it's making changes, all the changes made are being highlighted in green. In order to accept them, I can just click this accept all button. Now it has made that script, hsexpyramid.r, and I would like for it to actually run the script and make sure that it works. And the agent is actually able to directly run the script from the IDE here. And usually the first time it's running a script for you, it will ask you whether it's okay to run that script. What I like to do is change this from ask every time to auto run. That way, anytime it wants to run a script, it will run it. Now it says that you should be cautious here of running external scripts from other people in this case, because they could do something harmful to your computer. But as long as you know what you're doing and you're running your own scripts, that should be okay. So click to continue. So it's going to try to run the script. As we saw, there was an error because the ggplot2 package wasn't installed. So it'll ask me whether I want to install the packages. And I say yes. And now it has gone ahead and run the script. And it seems it put my plots inside of a PDF. But I don't want it as a PDF. Let me say outputs the figure as a JPEG. And we can observe the changes it's making here. So it added this section here to create a JPEG. And it's also running that command. And great, now I have that JPEG image. And there we have the age sex pyramid. Amazing. So that's one way you can use cursor. You can just ask it what you want, and usually it will go ahead and do that accurately. Of course, there are some things that the model can't do. So if you don't have a good understanding of how R works, you are likely to get stuck at some point. Now let me show you two other things you can do. First of all, let's accept these changes. Okay. The first thing is that as you're writing your own code, if you have specific places where you want to change things, you can highlight and then click on this edit button here or control K and then ask a specific instruction. For example, here, instead of read.csv from utils, I wanted to use the read R version. Use read R to import the data. So it will change from read.csv to read underscore CSV. And then the other thing you can do is as you're typing, you can have your code actually auto completed. So for example, if I wanted to change maybe the name of the age column to age in years, I could say something like this. I could just put a comment, rename age to age in years. And then once I press enter, it will give me the code that I need to do that in light gray. I can press the tab key to accept and tab again. And of course, because I changed age to age in years, I need to change it all through the script. But if I click maybe on the next place where age is written, the model will realize what I probably need to do, and it's already guessing that I need to change the age in year. So I can press tab and press tab again, and then it'll guess the next place I need to go. So if I press tab again, it goes there, age in years, and I think those are the only places where I need to change that. So those are the three main ways you're using the LLM assistance. One is you have the chat window. Two is you can highlight code and press control K to edit that specific code. And three is as you're typing code, it tries to autocomplete and predict your next type or predicts your next change. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to create automatic reports using this AI agent. And so for that, I've come up with this automated data reporter prompt. But of course, you can come up with your own modified version. And I tell the model 
that it's an AI agent that creates elegant data reports, and it should create these reports by writing code to an R Markdown file using this GitHub document output. GitHub document is just a .md file. It's a special type of Markdown file that is easy for the models to read. Then it should knit that file and then read the output file to validate its work. Then I tell it it should repeat this edit knit review loop until the reporting task is achieved and it should use plots, tables, and inline R code as needed. So what we're trying to get the model to do is get into this loop that most data analysts use when they're writing code, which is you write some code, you run that code to see the output of the code, and then you edit your code based on that output. So we're telling the model to do that same thing. And so what you can do is each time you have some data reporting task, you can just paste in this prompt or some modified version of it, and then you give it your actual task. And now I can paste in the task that I want the model to do. I will give this to you under the video so you don't have to type it up. So I wanted to create a data report answering these five questions. When was the first case reported? Then which 10-year age group had the most cases? What was the median age of those affected? Had there been more cases in men or women? And which district had had the most reported cases? And I can just press enter to run that. And let's narrate what the model is doing. It's listing the items in the directory so it can see what's going on. Then it lists the Ebola Sierra Leone CSV. And now it's going ahead and writing up that code. So now it created that Ebola analysis.rmd script and it's rendering that script for me. And it ran into some kind of error. And because it's an automated agent, it sees the error and it knows what it needs to change in the code. We can look at the code. The code is being changed now. And it'll update that code to fix the error and try again. So now it has created that Ebola analysis report for me. I can take a look here. And at the moment it's opening in just the raw markdown format. But if you right click here on the side and you click on open preview, you will see the previewed version of that. And you can see it looks much neater. It says the first case was reported on May 18th, 2014. You have the plot of the number of cases by age group. And it says the group that was most affected, the median of them as well. It plots the gender distribution. It gives me the district analysis. And it's all very nice. One thing I don't like is that it shows the code in the report, so I could ask it to hide the code. And let's say hide the code from the report. Okay. And to do that, it's just going in and adding echo equals false to the code chunks. And it'll run the script again. And now again, I can right click on Ebola analysis.md, open preview. And now we have the report, but without the code. Very nice and neat. So now this MD output is very good for the model to read its output and make sure it's doing the right thing, but it's not a very great output for sending to other people. So first let me accept everything, click on accept all here, and let me now change this to an output that I like, which is HTML document. So I can type HTML document here, but actually I also want it to be a self-contained HTML document. That means the figures will be stuffed into the HTML as well. And so for that, I need to press enter here and then tab and cursor is auto-completing for me, which I don't want. Then after HTML document, another colon, then press enter again, and then another tab, and then the following self underscore contained, self contained colon true. And this will now give me a self contained HTML. Let's render that. And now this HTML file, I can right click on it. I can reveal in my file explorer. From my file explorer, I can double click to open it in my browser. And now I see that nice report there. So hopefully now you see the value of setting up AI agents to work with your R ecosystem. They can really speed up your work and make you a much more productive analyst. These models will keep getting better and these tools will keep evolving. But indeed, we are at the early stages of a transition where data analysts move from just typing up code to being higher level orchestrators of a bunch of smaller agents. These are exciting times to be a data analyst. Hopefully you feel like you're a little bit better equipped after this video. For now, I'll say bye-bye and I'll see you in the next one.